Ultimate Grand Finals. Really? Yes. In fact, we are seeing a exact replica of Aeon Ultimate 73's Grand Finals. Amaryllis from the winner's side. We've seen him tear through tonight's bracket, absolutely annihilating John Numbers to secure his spot to Grand. And Chris fought tooth and nail to get back here to fight. These two are no strangers to each other, but in the best of five territory, they've only ran into each other once before. And Amaryllis came out on top. So, let's see what happens. So far, Emeralds, looking like getting the combos, but not the same way we saw on numbers. You know, getting a bit of damage here and there, but Ness is the kind of character where it feels like every time he hits you, he's gonna end up really racking up the percent. Yeah, no, this is gonna be a very hit-heavy match ahead of us. I don't see either Whoa. of these players sitting up. <gasps> yeah, that yeah. was okay. So. Let's talk about it. There's a lot all of right, down so on that first one. Of all, That's just the first stop. So first of all, PK Chris lands a PK fire. But then, Amaryllis SDI's out, and Witch Time set. During the Witch Time, goes down to back air him. He gets the tech, but then he goes for the up B, and Emeralus up Bs into his up B, thus canceling it out, letting him drop ever so softly to his death. And that's just the start. Y'all are plugged in for a good grand finals. Chris right now is on the hunt, trying to see if he can stop the bleeding a little bit. But Amaryllis is not slowing down at all. Very aware of Chris's tricks. And not facing the right way for down okay. smash. I mean, it, it just it wouldn't have worked anyway. Oh, there's the Amaryllis special. Or at least that's what uh what player four dubbed it. Going for that up smash. Oh. Um. Your PK, Chris. You fought so hard. You made he had a ridiculous so losers round. I've been teasing this kid every round of losers he's won through because earlier in tonight's bracket he said, "Man, I'm just gonna lose to C." That was in losers round six. Since then, not only did he defeat C, Chris has managed to find a win on Mr. L, on Pokey Lamb, on Miles, on Charles, and now on John Numbers. Absolute absurdity. But it looks like that run of his is. Might be getting cut short against this. Amaryllis is just looking so good right now. It's just, it's so brilliant. The plays he's making, it's, it's, they're massive. Oh, speaking of oh, massive Oh, we play plays, on layers, though. my friend. These two are very familiar with each other's little tricks, their little habits. You know when you see a trick that's like a once a set kind of thing you get away with on an opponent? Eventually, throughout your career, you burn through a lot of those. These guys are very familiar with those little tricks. But right now, it's Amaryllis taking game one. Whoa. What do you think I'm going to be seeing for game two? It's kind of hard to call. I feel like small battlefield or battlefield would be a solid choice from Chris. Uh, and it looks like the token drags ourselves over to battlefield. Now the reason being is actually for fairly similar reasons that I thought battlefield would have worked for John Numbers over in Losers Finals. And that's because the plat layout manages to make a lot of approaches linear because there's just something in the way. Uh, that's especially relevant with Bayonetta because Dive Kick just lands you on the fly. You don't just go through it. Um, there's also going to be a lot of opportunity for playing offstage, which we saw a lot of from Chris earlier tonight. Yeah, and those bigger blast zones mean that Bayonetta is not going to be cheesing you quite so easily. Uh, you know, the fact that there's so much room at the top and the sides. I mean, you know, Ness still can die to them because, you know, if he ends up really deep off stage, what is he going to do? But this is very true. Although it is worth noting that consistently, the reason that Chris does sit a set count above uh, Amaryllis, he usually executes a pretty solid SDI. And you're going to have to see Amaryllis go for a lot of shortened combos because of that. Reliable damage, yes. Reliable early stocks, not the same. Ooh, falling out of that up smash is a massive, massive pickup for uh, Amaryllis. And it might even get him this first stock because he gets Chris way deep off stage. Oh, we're ball. We are OD deep. Oh. Yeah, no, you can't come back from that. <laughs> just just goes down to scare him. Didn't even didn't even touch him. It was really important to be there though, because because that was so oh, that was a great catch with the PK flash. <laughs> was it though? <laughs> I feel like Emeralds kind of participated in that. In he that put himself there, but hey, listen, Chris, the one who pulled the trigger. You could stand in front of the gun, but that's on you. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm talking about standing in front of a gun, Chris firing away. Jander finds the mark, and all of a sudden, this is a very different game too. 
Oh, and this could be it. Oh, okay. I know that Bayonetta can go down there in which time. But she can, but it was a really weird situation for Amaryllis, and he could not afford to dip down there and get hit by the PK Thunder. Otherwise, we would have seen the quickest reverse three stock of your and mine career. <laughs> <laughs> they take out swinging. so many moves, but none of them are connecting somehow. No, yeah, they're my boys, but that doesn't change the fact that they're apes. <laughs> they're <laughs> actually just <laughs> finding at any hit that they can get, trying to press forward because they know they can make that one little hit count. For Amaryllis, it finds its way into a combo. For Chris, it could potentially be a hit confirm into throwing off stage, and then all of a sudden, you've got the off stage play. Saw them both physically react to that. I think that was just a missed punish from Amaryllis. And that means that PK Chris in the driver's seat right now. He's at 140, still surviving. Gonna pepper him for a little bit of damage with Bullet Climax. And it's putting Chris really low. What's our option? We are gonna whiff, but we're still gonna reset the situation. We were turned the uh, wrong way, but up smash because of it. A bit of a lucky break for Amaryllis. Why did he up be there? Potentially a mix-up because of the propensity of Amaryllis to Bullet Climax. Bullet Climax will cover that really sharp angle inwards, so going for the high recovery. Honestly, good mix-up from Chris, but the fact that Amaryllis chose the wrong way to shoot his guns <laughs> and was positioned perfectly for up smash just worked. And, and he didn't do it wrong. He just had that next level mind game. Forced the high recovery by Bullet Climaxing in the wrong direction. Yeah, no, they're, they're on levels that we just don't understand. We could try, though. Oh, goodness, we could try. Emeril is doing a really good job with these wave lands where he'll, you know, throw out a side B or something like that, but then wave land onto the platform in order to avoid, you know, real lag. Oh, and that's the reason why, because one hit from those side B's can lead oh, to damage. Oh, a quick check. Oh, he's forced to up B. It's once again a super high up B. He's getting his jump back from that, though, which means that... Oh, that's a lot of charge. That's a little too much. Let's go down there. Good, which time? What's the call here? No, it's a buffer attack. He has so much lag. Is that going to be... Yeah, with those pummels, you better believe. Even with good DI, that is a 1-1 one, one count. I feel like that was a lot of pummels. He needed to. Every percent is I, counted. I, I mean, like, I feel like the mash should have come out. Like, isn't the rule usually, like, one pummel for every 50%? What? It's like one pummel for every 50%. Uh... Something like that. It's something of that nature, but like it's. He got four pummels in though. I do not. I, I find. A, I'm wondering what was going on with Emeraldus's hands on his controller because I does feel like he should have matched out of that before the back throw came out. Regardless, he was fighting off the back throw that entire time. Once again, we see a situation where we've got the return on the stage we've lost to. Although this time, I feel like it was a much closer match. Chris playing with the lead for the most part made sense because he played very confidently off the stage beforehand, but Amaryllis didn't play bad by any means. He didn't, but like, considering how decisive game one was, I'm surprised that Amaryllis still opted to come back here. Yeah, after... Oh! oh yeah, no. <laughs> In another world, there was, a, there was a PK Thunder 2 that connected there and definitely hit me. I definitely didn't live that. What and I didn't live that one either. PK Chris reels back in his seat. He's like, oh. Yeah, no, this is not part of the script, but Chris will take it. An early stock, and now Amaryllis got to fight off the uh, off the heel. He's able to find a lot of these hits, though, because of the way that Chris is approaching on shield. It's also because, you know, in general, Chris likes to be in the air, likes to be throwing at all of those hitboxes and moves. Uh, and side B is just, the displacement on it can be a really good tool for just being like, no. Ooh, just waiting in place. Pops a jump, very interesting, but still gets some damage because of it. I want to say, we have not seen a single witch time that's not been like an offstage witch time that work out. <laughs> They're actually both apes. They're my apes, but they are both apes. <laughs> there are many others like them, but, but these, these, two, these two are mine. Amarillo is struggling right now, whoa, find whoa, a way whoa. off the ledge, and Chris manages to find the parry up air to get his kill. DK Chris looking really good right now. And again, going for the up throw. I think it's been working out the damage that he's been able to dish. is just so much. Amarillo is well, the That is the eye. That's the eye, dude. Yeah. If you want a big difference to a lot of the targets that fell victim to Amarillo's combos and Chris, you look at how they escape these 
combos. Okay. Because most of them are escaping in a hearse. And that's where Emeralds is going. Down air kills him. And that's the 2-1 count for Chris. We're on the verge of the bracket reset, Salty. Oh, Emeralds, though. Definitely not going to give it to him. I think that we're not going to be seeing Battlefield again. Considering the fact that game two, pretty decisive. And game three, very decisive. Uh, I actually missed what stage they picked. I think they picked Battlefield. Did they really pick Battlefield? Are you sure? Uh, like about the uh, Are you sure about that one, bud? All right. It's like exactly when you said, I don't think Battlefield. Uh, well, we'll see how it works out. It could be that, you know, Emeralist, you know, he's here with his bud all the way in Grand Finals. He doesn't want it to end yet. He wants a bracket reset. I don't know about all that. <laughs> First place looks pretty good. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. The amount of entrance that we had here tonight. Yeah, whoever gets first place. I realize, you know, we don't like to talk about the M word of, you know, money. The amount of money that you get for winning a bracket. But, yeah, they're going over with a pretty penny. But right now they got to determine who's going to win it out first. And a very strong start to game four. It makes Emeralds look like he's the one who wants to walk away with the gold. Another one of those back air. Ooh. And following through on the SDI. We saw that same great SDI from PK Chris, but uh, Amaryllis still able to continue the combo for a nice 40%. Just able to find these hits here and there. He's adding up the damage so effectively. Look at the movement right now. And I was questioning his battlefield pick, but it feels like Amaryllis just wasn't doing this level of movement in those last two games. And this time around, I can see why he does, in fact, like this stage. In defense of Amaryllis, PK Chris was not allowing him to move around like that. We saw a lot of aerial coverage from Chris. We saw a lot more combos on his call. And Chris was just being able to play aggressively, much more effectively than we're getting a chance to see here. Yep. That forward smash almost spelled Doom and almost spelled a 3-1 stock lead. Yeah, no, <laughs> it really does feel like PK Chris is scared in a way that he has not been for the last two games. Uh, down B? That was maybe the sickest bump Ooh. that I've ever seen from Chris, and it ended up leading to a ledge situation that completely threw away Amaryllis' lead. I mean, not quite threw away the lead. He does still have a massive percent advantage, which just got converted into a stock, so we still do have two stocks to one. But, I mean, PK Chris, he's been playing so, so well tonight that if you're Amaryllis, he can't, he can't already be thinking about, you know, the nice drive home with all the nice stacks in your pocket. Oh, that Ooh. down air is really important, but so was that ABK to bounce back. Oh, we are oh. getting screwy at the ledge, and because of that, Amaryllis brings us into a game five. That was the lucky break that Amaryllis needed in that ledge play because that really could have gone either way. Man, game five between these two. Based on how Amaryllis had worked that game one, I thought we were kind of going to see a sweep. But you're right that these players... So know as, a, as a little fun fact between the saga of PK, Chris, and Amaryllis, because they do actually run into each other fairly often in brackets. In the best of three sets, where they typically run into each other for winners' quarters, winners' semis, losers' quarters, losers' semis, Chris will come out on top. Typically speaking, he will sit with a 2-1 victory over Amaryllis, whether it's a fault of Amaryllis or PK Chris clutching it out. That's typically how it will end. And if you'll note in this own game count, there was a point where we saw 2-1 in favor of Chris there, and if it was best of three, that would have been it. If we were at Xeno, we would have walked into the Grand Finals reset. Not here, though. Amaryllis had the set to recompose himself, turn some shenanigans into his favor, and bring us into game five. And so far, the only other situation where Amaryllis has had this opportunity to defeat Chris, he has done so. It's on Chris to be able to beat him in the best of five now. And with game five taking us on Battlefield, there's very much a likelihood that he could do it. Yeah, and I mean, PK Chris not scared in the same way that he had been in that last game. Already big combos and also combo strings in ways that we had not seen before. Back throw is probably going to do it. It does, just barely. Could he have maybe air dodge to keep himself alive there? No, I think that was way too deep out. That buffet oh air dodge was so good from Chris, recognizing the danger of the situation and just getting out of dodge as best as he can. <laughs> the bullet art extension from forward smash and Amarillo's classic that guarantees that his opponent can't get too effective of a punish off of with forward smashes. Oh. But how's that for a reversal? 
and after Amaryllis has worked so hard to get to Grand Finals winner's side. Right now, he is, oh, it's looking like the reset is incoming. Even now, he's struggling to finish the stock from PK Chris. Interesting. Back throw at low percent. I guess just wanted to get him off stage. Yeah, just get him get away from him. It would have been the, the best call, but... I mean, forward throw has a much higher base knockback. That is true. But, uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's hard to say because Bayonet is one of those characters where Bayonet is off stage, but, like, does it really matter? <laughs> In a way, because you want to just keep her away from you. Let her expend resources to get back to the stage. That way, they don't have to worry about it becoming combo tools. For every ABK, every dive kick, every witch twist, that's another situation where Amaryllis has to re-land. He has to reset the count of resources that he has. And that could be make or break for Chris in a lot of these situations. And so is that SDI. That was actually fantastic for Chris. I'll be honest with you, Salty. I grill players all the time on how poorly they'll SDI out of Amaryllis' combos. This is the set to study if you want a reason to practice your STI. This is how you survive. This is how you turn reversals. This is how you make Bayonetta look like a character th that struggles to kill, that struggles to combo, that struggles to stay relevant. Well, that being said, even though it's not necessarily these massive hits that we normally see, Let's get Nickel and Diming him on 111, 112%. He could feasibly die here. Also, Back he here could does feasibly it. die. So. And that's the Grand Finals reset. We have now entered Stage 2. We and <laughs> this is the sort of thing where if you're Amaryllis, sometimes when you're in Grand Finals winner's side, you can feel like you already won the tournament. I mean, he beat John Numbers. He bodied John Numbers. Yeah, no, that was a massacre. Like, like, Numbers yeah. is my boy, but that was an ass whooping and a half. That was yeah. kind of legendary. But now, it's on even ground here. And when you feel like you already have won, and then to see it snatched away from you, that's when your mentality can start to crumble. So Amaryllis needs to not fall victim to that, because PK Chris will take advantage of it and just sweep through him if he lets him. I don't, I don't know if either of these players are going to let up the win easily in any way, because that was a very clutch finish from Chris to find the back air. And that was one forward smash away from ending. Which, as a note, the previous Aeon ended in that very fashion. Grand Finals, forward smash from Amaryllis to end it 3-2 for him. But now, Chris finds his own reversal. And because of that, it's the reset. The stage is... The SDI! <laughs> Did you see? He popped out the bottom! Yeah, no, he's flying out. Like, floaty characters have it nice when it comes to if you have really good SDI. Because you almost comically, like, zip out of Witch Twist. This is also really good against other, like, multi-hit heavy characters. If you just don't, don't want to bother. That's so consistently doing that. Bumping into the stage to avoid getting Witch Timed. At that point, what is Amaryllis' counterplay to it? Oh, not that air dodge. He's fine. Yeah, he had his triple jump with the what? bounce up. He already used his air dodge down there, so he can air dodge back, and that bump was just a little too far. Could he have B reverse switch timed? No, it wouldn't have displace him to back to the ledge, maybe? It don't got a it don't got a hurt box or hitbox displacement that would connect him to the ledge like that. What happened to the music? I think it's just one of those really low sitting tunes that plays in this game. That's gonna happen when you have over a thousand music tracks. You have some that just sort of don't work. But yes, I also noticed that the uh, the stereo <laughs> broke for game five. And game I, will, six. I will mention both of them have their headphones plugged in and they are hearing the musicless battlefield. Who knows what? I that mean, these will are two very loud power. characters. I, yeah, like I always, I always note to uh, to uh, Fang and Duramgar how Ness never shuts the hell up, <laughs> um, and I very much enjoy the fact that Bayonetta is another character who doesn't stay quiet. I mean, a lot of I feel like a lot of Bayonetta sounds come from when she's witch twisting you. And oh it's yeah, like you're gonna hear that. Seven hundred multi hits. What is that? A timpani drum or something like that? You tell me, music man. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the next time he lands one, and I'll let you know. All right, cool. If he lands one, if he gets a chance to play in this game one. All oh, right, to the knees. PK Chris, one hundred and forty-five percent, and looking shockingly healthy. As, oh, now Amaryllis, he's, he's at 89. 
And he might counting. very well die here. Okay. He does manage to find his kill. It's a bit of rough doing, though, because this is a hell of a comeback that Amaryllis needs to find if he finds him in this game. Oh, I like the patience from PK Chris. Doesn't want to... Still respects the possibilities of, uh, you know, a massive Amaryllis combo. So he's not just holding forward trying to end it. Instead, he's waiting for his opportunities. And, I mean, I cannot mock him for doing it. He is taking game one here. He is... He's... So close to making. Think about the losers run he's made here. When did PK Chris get knocked into losers? It was like losers fairly round early three. on. It was like losers round three. Yeah, right? it was. It was not fun for him. Um, I mean, he's having a blast now. I don't know. Both of these guys look stressing. You look at the player cams. I wouldn't want to be either of them right now. <laughs> they hurting, bro. I'd also like to point out that this whole, the rest of this set is being played on Battlefield. The bands back and forth are almost guaranteeing that this is the best setting for either player. Um, like, typically speaking, like, maybe Kalos or Small Battlefield or Smashville or PS2. It'll all be, like, swell stages. We're not going to see any of those. What I do want to see, though, is I do want to see Amaryllis cool it a little bit. If he just tries to find his composure so that he could stop rushing in on Ness, he'll be able to get these consistent combos and get the consistent damage that we saw from the first set of Grand Finals. Because right now, he's going getting hit very often from Chris. Oh, Likewise wow. from Chris, I do want to see him try to shape up his ledge play because there's been a lot of instances where Emerald slows down just a tiny bit, and I feel like the whiplash from how this sense of advantage goes from this very rapid pace to a screeching halt to Bayonetta just pacing back and forth, more often than not, it invites the forward smash. Chris ought to be catching on to that by now. Uh, oh, he, he did OD deep for no good reason, and but he came back for free. Yeah, surprised that Amaryllis didn't even try to challenge it. At the very least, I mean, I know that, you know, he had been very effectively evading the witch time, but, you know, maybe try to angle it differently or at least threaten it and then try and re- uh, get the witch time on the, the bounce off. Ooh, um, he waited too long with PK Flash in that situation too. Right now it looks like Chris is slipping with the offstage play and that was a really good dive kick from Amaryllis. Oh, and a great parry. Able to get more and more damage here. You know, he was looking so, so good. PK Chris, I thought he was just going to make oh, with rage happen. And a little bit of a mishap in the SDI. It's not going to kill at 66, but it threatened it. Yeah, the combos. These combos were not happening like this in the last, in the entirety of the last set. But all of a sudden now... Yo, that forward air one to interrupt. No, you're not finding your grab. There's a gun in the way. Fifty-six percent. This is like the story for both of these players. Is that you know once they fall a little bit behind? Oh, that one's dangerous. All right, I think now at this point we have seen every Bayo buff except for the jab killing coming into play. Now we've seen how Swift Down Smash is. We've seen how there is longer stun or which time, whatever you want to call it. Slow down. Whatever it may be, when a projectile hits you as opposed to a normal. Battle, yeah. We just need to see jab kill, and that's it. We've hit the bingo card on Bayonetta killing. You know, I, I feel like there have been times where jab kill possibly could have come out. You know, I mean, remember that first it, game? It, he was struggling On the real, though, him. who is going for jab at kill percentages? Unless your character is Bowser Jr.? Like, I don't want to ever see that. Uh, man, I miss jab mix-ups. Oh. You're taking me back to another game. But that's not <laughs> where we're at, my friend. If we see Jed mix ups, it's mixing the ankles. <gasps> Again! All right, this oh. is something where, this uh, that like Emeralist, he didn't forget about that. He was just saving, making sure that, you know, PK Chris would forget about it and take advantage of it the most he could. Oh, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of taking advantage of, Emerald is kind of being taken advantage of right now. The combo game is so good from both of these players, but it's the wild hits that really make you stop and think. Oh, can't find the mark with back air, but he finds his up tilt back air. Just nets him damage. Very smart adaptation from Chris this time. He knows that the bullet art extension from forward smash is coming, opting to leap over, traverse the platform safely, and just find whatever may kill in that situation. 
And now we're in the situation where in game one, it turned out really, really badly for Amaryllis as he was struggling to get the kill, really trying to find it. PK Chris playing around that and managing to get tons of damage. That's what we're seeing again. Look at all of that. And he DI'd to the tide of that back throw. I dare you to find a player who is this confident against the likes of Bayonetta from the matchup perspective. The way that Chris is playing is fantastic. But right now, Amaryllis is coming back to life. He finds his hit, and we're going right back into the mix. All right, and this is now Raid's Bayonetta. Oh, look at that. You see him SDIing over to the left, making sure he doesn't get put all the way to the right side blast zone. And that's the sort of thing that keeps him alive. Only taking about 55%. And, oh. Yo, the schmixy movement into up throw. He didn't get anything out of it, but it looked clean as hell. Dash attack definitely not safe on block in uh, this situation. The amount of up B out of shields that Amaryllis is getting. I mean, it's, yeah, obviously it's a great tool, but, like, that means you're shielding in front of the mess. I mean, you got to be bold with it. It's definitely more of the idea of approaching with it, and that was the best <laughs> float in from Psy Magnet. That was right over the hitbox. Oh, that wasn't full charge. Bad timing on down smash. PK Chris going to be finding his way back to the ledge only to meet the giant fist once again. And that was honestly such smart ledge trapping from Amaryllis. You notice that he knew he didn't have invincibility, but he wouldn't actually be able to contest it. So he ran forward and then faded back, faded that ledge attack, and then punished with the forward smash. It's one of those things where, you know, we've seen it, that really good players, they'll use their movement in order to bait players into specific ledge options that they, they can then punish. Both players just kind of struggling to find their hits that matter, but I feel like in the long run, the way that Chris goes for his little bits of damage with PK Thunder and PK Fire has been working out really well in the long game. But Amaral is able to make that all back so quickly. Oh, but this is the thing. Now that they're both deep in the red here, <laughs> I, I, you just notice the fact that PK Chris and Ness have so many kill options. Look at that, that back air almost finishing it from across the stage. And let's not forget, up air, grab. There's so many things that you're Amaryllis, you have to be looking out for. Oh, not that down air, not on shield. Somehow Amaryllis not dying off of it. Oh, but all right. Both of them just struggling to get out these kills, but that's Max Rage Bayonetta. Ooh. Finding something into back air is going to do it at this point, but like you said, damn near anything that Ness has is threatening kill. Dude, even forward air from off stage like that? We're getting to a point now where I think PK Thunder is going to threaten to kill if... Like, <laughs> this is actually ridiculous that the way that these percentages have climbed so far. No bullet climax this time. What's the answer oh. at the ledge? No forward smash. I think that's a hell of a mix-up. Great parry. But he wasn't able to punish. That time around, the dash attack will be killing. And that's why we're seeing him go for it. But there it is. Finally. Oh, yo, she, don't, she got deleted. After, after like a minute and a half of Amaryllis just bleeding out of every orifice. Finally, PK Chris finds the grab. But that was almost turned around on him. We're into game four. Once again. This is a situation for if it was a best of three, Chris had got it. But this isn't the best of three. Now the real question is, can Chris end it out here? Or do we get the 10 game grand finals? Oh, well, I feel like, you know, some matchups when you see them, the first, I don't know, 30 seconds pretty much dictates who will be the winner. You know, I, like, I just oh, want to point oh. out, if you watched how aggressive Chris is moving his control stick, you could see from his arm in the player cam. I got a different view of it from here on the... <laughs> uh, for, dude, the way that he's moving is actually like maybe perfect SDI. Like, the way that the inputs are coming out is so aggressive, and he has to adjust his posture so quickly. It's actually insane. Yo, big ups to Congo Jungle Music for making sure that Grand Finals looks infinitely better than it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, once again, those bullet arts. PK Chris not quite ready for them. That's the sort of thing where we already know he can play around that if he is careful. So, Avenir Amaryllis, that's not a free option. Look at him hopping around all over the place. They both know, yeah. they both totally understand how important these next few hits are going to be. 
Emerilus, I feel like he's taking that PK Thunder specifically just to get back on stage. I mean, it's a better call than trying to futz around at the ledge because you yeah. don't really want to meet uh, Chris either if it's PK Flash, if it's any of his down tilts, PK Fire, like a grab even. You'd much rather run the risk of uh, forcing Ness to follow you around and potentially up air you with like dash attack and find its mark as Chris gets the first kill in game and four. Was, I think some questionable DI. Maybe he could have gone to the corner. Okay. Amaryllis, though. Oh, that air dodge was not good from Chris. He brings himself right into the line of sight for Bullet Climax. And we even see that little taunt from Amaryllis showing he's still got some life in him. Oh, that taunt might be a little bit premature, though. Not, I, really I swear that's like Olbeos. I know, it. but just because they've... I listen. A strong Obeos sense of showmanship it. runs through all their veins. Is that something that he can... Uh, I realize that it's very risky to do, but can, if he witch times that... PK Flash is Ness within range to actually get him slowed down from it. It genuinely depends on how close he is from the uh, the hitbox. There is a very large range when projectiles get witch timed as opposed to normals, but that range is pretty nebulous given how large of a projectile PK Flash is. And likewise, Chris typically uses it while retreating. Is that death? No, having to recover. Go to a little hit. Time. Yeah, no, you die now, but that little hit is so important. <laughs> and the roll read. Yeah, just like that. We're back to square one. One stock apiece for both of these players. PK Chris right now, possibly one stock away from being the entire tournament's champion. He knows it. Look at him going in right now, but going in can be a risk. Amaryllis, his punish game is still very solid, even if for the most part, PK Chris managed to avoid the worst for him. I mean, it's still rushing aggressively against Bayonetta. These are both characters who you don't want to just recklessly move in on. You even highlighted it yourself. Which twist out of shield has been the real MVP for Amaryllis, and it makes all the sense in the world. That dive kick into PK Flash, though, I don't know about that one. Oh, this could be it. Salty, are we gonna get it? Are we gonna get it? Oh, not with oh. that forward smash or not. He just runs at him. This could be it for PK Chris. The turnaround, perhaps? No, he's not finding any footing, even now. Like tension's trapped. high as the threat of the forward smash, oh. but being just out of range of it, it's Chris in the hot seat. He's in control of the ledge, and he hits with PK Thunder, but it's not going to be enough. A whiff forward smash? Oh, we've got the oh. jukes, the side magnet. That's going to be it, though. Into the grab, and it's not enough of a mash. And Chris does it. A 3-1 win over Amaryllis. And he manages to take Encore number 102. In Game 9 of Grand Finals. After getting knocked into out. losers. When did he get knocked into losers, man? Like, seriously, great stuff to BK Chris. Despite all of the, all of the insane players who were here tonight.